Amrish Paliga, I think Avilal Wise is with us. Let's get that initial comment from him since we're on the topic of Reliance Industries and Arcom and the AGM tomorrow. Amrish, thanks for joining in. Every time these AGMs happen, uh, there is an expectation, there is a buzz around what the announcements could be. Typically, they don't tend to come out with very smart announcements per se from the stock market perspective though. Right. Uh, I think uh, again, uh, the expectation would be on the gas fine and the quantum of that and also possibly as to when the launch of Geo would happen. I think uh, these are the two aspects which uh, people would, uh, would in fact be looking forward to. Uh, what about Arcom, Amrish? Anything material you think that could come about? Could they make some announcements about uh, their telecom foray and how the partnerships could be for the Reliance Communications? Because that's the other one that has gotten excited ahead of the AGM. Uh, I mean, they may discuss about uh, the sort of partnership they may be having with Arcom, but then uh, if uh, people are expecting anything further, uh, I mean, uh, something of a sort of announcement of a takeover and things like that, which I doubt, I mean, whether it can come tomorrow. But surely, I think uh, they would, uh, I mean, uh, they may discuss about uh, the partnership uh, which has already been forced to a certain extent with Arcom. We will talk about these stocks with Ashwini and Sandeep too. Uh, mind you, just pull up the stock price of Bombay Rayon. We pointed it out. It was down 11% then, now down 18.5 or 19 or percent. And the fall is sudden. It's not really a gradual fall. It's just gone off completely. And it's not gone down on very high volumes. It's actually fallen on fairly low volumes too. So some problems out there. I don't know what the news could be. Um, no inkling as of now. But something's cooking out there. We will talk more about this as well. Let's take that very quick break. Come right back, talk about Bombay Rayon, talk about Arcom, talk about a few other stocks which are very active in trade today. Welcome back. Before we go any further, I need to speak about Cadilla. Mind you, they launched a pioneering drug for patients suffering from a form of diabetes with a potential revenue of $1 billion. That's the number that we got. Mind you, the stock was extremely excited yesterday, so no surprise it's gone off. The market was expecting a lot more, or really, possibly with regards to some demerger or some buyback or something of that sort. That didn't come about. It's a major drug discovery for them, yes. So um, that it's a big thing, yes, for Kadilla, but the stock has fallen off. However, we caught up with the management. In fact, Vijay Ganesh and I are caught up with Pankaj Patel. Let's hear them. Indian pharmaceutical industry has been uh, providing quality medicines for a very long time. But there was always a question whether Indian drug companies can also discover on their own new molecules. This is the first time ever an Indian company has developed a new molecule. It's a very important milestone for the history of Indian pharma industry because I believe this is the beginning. Number of companies are doing research in the area of new chemical entities. And uh, simul this will be beginning of era where we will see a lot of Indian companies developing new chemical entities. This drug is a very unique drug because it's a, it has many firsts. First of all, it is a drug which has been first time indicated for diabetic dyslipidemia. There is no current treatment available for diabetic dyslipidemia. Second, this drug is a first in class drug. In the Glitazar class, there is no single approved drug in the world and this is the first drug getting approval in the world in the Glitazar class. Third, this drug has a dual action of both controlling lipides and glucose. And as a result, it creates a kind of a unique advantage for people who are suffering from Syndrome X or Metabolic Disorder. Shivan, if we would ask you, when it comes to Lipaglid, what would be the kind of revenue streams that you are looking out, uh, say, and when we can expect the launch to happen? And also, what would be the kind of investment that you have made through the value chain reaching this stage? So this drug has been discovered over a period of last 12 years. Over a period, we have spent approximately $250 million in this drug discovery. We will be investing another $150 to $200 million further to get the approvals in other markets and launch in other markets. We expect to launch this drug in the Indian market in the next uh, uh, few months. And uh, we expect that in the first five years, these drugs will become among the top 50 drugs in India. And it will have a sale on excess of 100 crore rupees. Globally, this drug has a potential to become a blockbuster drug. Okay, that's uh, of course Zylus Cadilla on the new diabetes drug. Uh, we were talking about Reliance and Arcom. So Reliance, we spoke about the charts. Uh, Sandeep, what about Reliance Communications? 5% up in trade, volumes naturally high. 115, 116 currently. Uh, it's, it's bounced back after dripping, dipping for a bit. Went down all the way to 103. 
currently at 115 what do you do now you know we had a buy in reliance communication at 114 and we maintain that in case it comes down it, it is possible it can come down to 113 114 you use that dip to buy and my target is 120 121 probably even 124 So I I would sense a clear move of five to seven percent, and I think Arcom is much much more stronger than Reliance. Amrish, heard anything on Bombay Rayon? A sudden dip of seventeen eighteen percent. Ah uh, no, in fact I have not really heard anything much on that, so it's a bit diffi- uh, difficult for me to comment. But then uh, what I would say generally, as far as most of the mid-cap companies are concerned, uh, it's the corporate governance issues uh, which uh, have come to fore in the last uh, couple of months, in fact the last one year, and uh, that's what has been bothering a lot of people when they look at mid-cap companies. Right, um, Amrish. Yesterday uh, there was a lot of activity in the pharma space. Today it seems like oil and gas is taking center stage. Are you hearing of some uh, sectoral rotation happening in the market? Uh, not really, but then uh, clearly, I think uh, the two pockets uh, where uh, people uh, would be investing, uh, looking at slightly longer term, is actually pharma, which has been performing extremely well over the last uh, one and a half, two years. Uh, and among them, uh, clearly, we have uh, Sun Pharma and Lupin as our top buys, followed by Dr. Reddy's. As far as uh, the uh, uh, OMCs are concerned, I think the run has just about started. And like I've been saying uh, in the past few weeks, that I think uh, we are—I uh, mean, we should be in the beginning of a new bull run. As far as the o- uh, like OMCs are concerned, and will not really be surprised over the next couple of years if uh, some of them actually become multi-baggers, like uh, possibly IOC and uh, HVCL. Yep. Typically, the one that comes to the mind is BP, but. Uh A flattish in the session today. I think the oil and gas space, per se, led by Reliance, maybe a Gale India too, have done very well in the session today. A- any trades here, Ashwini? I mean, we've spoken about Reliance. What about Gale? What about uh, maybe ONGC? Possibly even the oil marketing companies. Well, they're certainly not buys because most of them are uh, breaking their 200-day moving averages. In the decline in crude, is clearly balanced by fall in rupees. So. Uh, You're not getting any kind of defensive action as well, so uh, I think uh, in terms of oil and gas, you would stick with probably uh, you know something that's working out very well is Castrol, uh, if you consider that oil and gas broadly, but uh, stick with uh, you know ONGC and uh, RIL in a weakening commodity market. Uh, you know you will have trouble uh, in trying to invest in oil space. MMTC, the OFS schedule for the 13th of June, 10% divestment uh, stock. Uh, bit of a nose dive. Typically these days, an OFS scares uh, bits out of uh, traders at least because a lot of these have been priced at a much lower price compared to the current market price prevailing at the time of the OFS. So no wonder M- MMTC did that too. It's not, of course, uh, the front pedigree in terms of liquidity, but still uh, the base price will be fixed. On June 12, naturally, so some still some time away. So we'll wait and watch that. Uh, okay, there are a couple of other stocks. Uh, Amrish, I specifically wanted to talk to you about these two. Uh, both of them losing out in trade today. One of them is India Cements. Now, mired by all that's happening with its head honcho today, the Economic Times also reported about uh, the possibilities of a CBI probe in the Jagan Mohan Reddy case on India Cements and Anshuni Vasan both. Uh, I mean, do, do the overhangs continue? One and therefore. Does the stock keep on drifting lower, or has it found value by virtue of replacement cost or whichever parameters you may be valuing it at? No, I mean uh, basically when you have such huge issues, uh, both uh, with the company's performance as well as uh, the news which surrounds the promoters and promoter family, I don't think there is any uh, reason to start looking for value at this point of time because uh, surely there are much better stocks to invest in that sector. So I mean, why look at a stock where uh, which is already has uh, so many issues? So the way I see it is, it may not really crack uh, too much uh, further from here, but then it will keep drifting. And uh, unless uh, you see, uh, I mean, a stock actually giving you possibly 20, 30 percent return over the next uh, one, one and a half years, it doesn't really make sense looking at it. So uh, I mean, uh, this could be a trader's bet from a bounce back angle, but surely not an investor's stock. What's the view on autos right now? Uh, post the sales numbers for the month. Ah, uh, in fact, uh, for autos in, uh, in uh, this, this is this is for me. This question is for me. 
Uh, Amrish, yes, this question is for you. Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, in the last uh, couple of months, I've been saying uh, that uh, since the monthly numbers uh, could turn out to be weak uh, for the autos, uh, clearly the consumption story is not really go I mean, going uh, down too well. And uh, it's expected to continue uh, to be weak uh, possibly for uh, the next couple of months, at least till uh, the, uh, I mean, uh, 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 possibly September, October till uh, Diwali uh, and uh, the festive season. Uh, so, uh, I mean, uh, looking at that, I, I mean, I would say that uh, even at these levels, one should should be possibly booking out an auto, but at lower levels, uh, one should look at, uh, I mean, buying Maruti and Mahindra and Mahindra. What about um, uh, the tractor numbers as we just saw? Do you see that as a trend uh, in recovery in the agribusiness, uh, particularly uh, for uh, the auto majors, the likes of an M&M, even for that matter, an Escorts? Uh, possibly looking at uh, the way the monsoons uh, will uh, spread out and uh, this, uh, I mean, this year, uh, I mean, it's expected that the monsoon should be good. I think uh, that should be a booster for the tractor business going ahead. So that's one small pocket uh, where I think one can be positive. Right. Uh, Amrish would also want your perspective uh, on uh, uh, some of uh, these counters which have been uh, cyclical in nature but have not uh, delivered much, uh, especially the metal pack, whether it's a Tata Steel, Jindal Steel and Parja, you know, there's much talk about will there be a recovery there, will there not be, will there be in a cyclical uptrend? What's the view on metals? Uh, I mean, the way I see it is uh, whether we'll have a recovery or whether there'll be an uptrend, uh, I mean, we're not very sure as of now. Uh, but the big, uh, I think the bigger question is whether the, whether the, like the uh, downtrend has uh, stalled. I mean, uh, we believe that uh, that has stalled to a large extent. And again, uh, looking at the sort of results which have come out for both Tata Steel and Hindalco, we feel that uh, these, I mean, both these stocks uh, have bottomed out. But uh, I don't think the uptrend may start immediately. Uh, I think, uh, like, uh, we may have to wait for a few more months for that uptrend. But I think the downside is over. Pop on Just Dial, uh, the listing today, Ambarish? I think uh, should be utilized to book out, especially for the retail investors. Uh, I mean, they already got a 10% discount. They're getting a 15% pop-up. I don't think uh, you should really expect much more from here, looking at the sort of rich valuations which are there. I think uh, these, are the, these are the levels to book out. Okay, 255. Let's get in those trading ideas at 255. Uh, Sandeep, to you first. Your top idea at this hour. Niraj, I would go long in a biocon with a stop loss of 280, target of 295, a trading move for a 5-7% upside. Uh, what about you, Ashwini? Your trading idea at 255? Well, Mahindra and Mahindra uh, is continuously holding you know, 975, 980. So that can be bought with a stop of about 980 and look for 1010, 1015. Okay, M&M 989, mind you, we spoke about it, strong results, strong dispatch numbers, the tractor sales were robust, got into a bit of a correction problem uh, the first day after, the new, after, the, after expiry, but since then has recovered quite well, 988. In fact, you know, we'll talk about this to Amrish as well. It's a top idea from Ashwini right now. Take a break though on this note. Here are Dimension Consulting's Ajay Srivastava, who is cautious on the markets for the near term and maintains a sell on stocks from IT and the auto sector. We have seen now very clearly that for the next 12 months, we don't see any major reason to buy into the Indian market, at least in the foreseeable future. I think the penalties, in fact, SEBI has been nice to them that they, all the penalties are non-financial in nature. To me, the only penalty any Indian understands is a financial penalty. When there ever is a correction of 10, 15, 20 percent, and believe me, every stock goes to that correction. Okay, accumulate the stock and keep bringing an average down. We are not advising a sellout. We are not advised for the last two years, three years, I think. Consumers face sellout. Even Maruti is now for the first time facing a volume issue in the market. And I think that's where if you are not, if one were to say, if you don't short the stock, at least you try to book the profit because upsides are now getting limited in the best performing auto stock of this country. Should we buy in fee? The answer is no. I think the upside pop is over and done with. And I think it's, um, we believe that the next quarter result will be far worse than what we had anticipated. So there is no reason to buy the Nifty at all. Welcome back. You're still watching Closing Trades uh, right here on ED Now. And the market for its bit, uh, well, you know, pretty much uh, in that uh, 
range but suffice to say that we've stabilized around the 59 uh, 20 with 59 30 odd levels uh, you know slight pick up in the market coming in not conclusive at that as yet uh, but you're looking at some of the mid-tier names holding fort, uh, especially the likes of an elder pharma five percent up on that stock you have a Bajaj Electricals, which has moved up in the session. Some traction in fertilizer names. Uh, Chumbal Fertilizers is up about 3.5%. Dani Enterprises has done decently okay for itself. Balji Telefilms, uh, not great volume action there, but you're seeing some price movement come in. Uh, Biocon has had a good session in a trade so far. Of course, on the losing side, the big story is Bombay Rayon. Incidentally, you should bring up the stock. I uh, just want to have a quick recheck on that one. It's now down about 20%. Yeah, locked in circa 184. Uh, you're also looking at an SR oil, which is extremely weak in the session. Uh, an Educom, which is down about 5% at 44.80. Some of the real estate names are looking extremely vulnerable. Orbit Corp losing about 2.5%, but the price there is small. Uh, and then you have the likes of Anisha Motors, even for that matter, uh, Core Education, which have given way. Some of the mid-tier banking names also looking a bit uh, weak. Uh, uh, which are your top three mid-cap ideas right now, Ambarish, which you're pushing for? Uh, in fact, uh, we are not really pushing uh, too much in the mid-cap space, uh, but uh, just one of the stocks uh, which uh, we are pushing quite hard is uh, Refco. Uh, where, uh, in fact, uh, we are uh, looking at the housing finance uh, sector doing well and uh, the sort of a, uh, uh, like uh, sub-sector they are in, uh, the margins are decently high. So this is one stock which we are uh, really uh, pushing. Hmm. What's the target there, Ambarish? Uh, there, in fact, uh, we are looking at levels of uh, closer to about uh, 250 to Okay. On to more news, uh, and a group of ministers would meet, the, meet, the, meet this evening on the urea pricing policy, what's on the agenda, and what the impact would be on certain fertilizer companies. Sriram, I think, has got some exclusive details, and he joins us now. Sriram, fill us in. Well, uh, that's what you're picking up from our sources. The government is looking to revise some of the sick uh, urea manufacturing units and uh, on the benefiting line uh, will be RCF and National Fertilizers. Uh, the RCF's Thal unit and National Fertilizers uh, Vijaypur unit will get an additional subsidy of as much as uh, 2,000 rupees per metric ton. Uh, and this is uh, a, a big relief for these two companies, but particularly for these two units which have been sick for a while. And uh, National Fertilizer will also uh, get a benefit because uh, uh, the Nangal unit, which is a Supposed to be converted by uh, to gas. Uh, uh, the deadline has been missed, but the uh, company might now get a relief. Uh, the the GOM might extend the deadline to December, allowing uh, this particular unit to get more time to convert into a cheaper fuel that is a gas-based urea uh, manufacturing facility that it is. And it's hardly a surprise because uh, the government is looking to make India self-sufficient when it comes to urea. We import nearly 80 lakh uh, million, uh, metric tons of uh, urea every year, uh, as opposed to a, a total demand of 200. So roughly over a, over a half of what our demand is that's what we can produce and uh, the subsidy on uh, imported uh, urea has increased over 34 percent in the last five years and that's a big uh, burden on the exchequer and therefore the government is looking uh, to hike urea prices that's one of the proposals on the GOM's agenda today and if uh, that's a very sensitive inf uh, uh, sensitive uh, sort of a proposal and if it do, does go ahead it will benefit the, the companies however uh, it's a politically sensitive uh, 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 sort of a proposal so the fertilizer ministry is not really backing this it's not uh, it's not supporting the hike in urea prices or bringing it under the nutrient-based subsidy scheme uh, and it uh, and that's the stance that uh, that's the fertilizer ministry has taken but the proposal is still on the GOM stable for reconsideration uh, Sharad Pawar will head this panel when the, this panel will include the likes of uh, uh, finance minister P. Chidambaram, food minister K.B. Thomas and uh, and others and uh, it's a big decision await awaited today uh, later in the evening we are uh, keep to stay tuned to ET now and as we track this very closely going forward I'm sure we will thanks a lot for that uh, Sriram for getting us that update. So maybe some positives for RCF and NFL. Amrish, I know it's a sector which is probably forgotten, at least not on the top of the radar as far as traders go or possibly when investors go. But uh, anything in the fertilizer pack, uh, maybe an RCF which will benefit today? Uh, possibly RCF, possibly a chamble because uh, these are the I mean, stocks which also normally move up uh, around monsoon's time and budget. So uh, since the monsoons are expected to be normal, I think because of this also you could see some bump up. 
Abrish, uh, fair call. As always, we really appreciate you joining us on our show and taking the time out and being with us. Thanks for ta thanks uh, for joining us and giving us your calls today. Now uh, that's the view from Abrish Baliga of Edelweiss. Mind you, he's speaking about some of the fertilizer names. Chumbal Fertilizers is extremely active. Before we get in, one more fundamental voice. Um, let's just. Uh,